Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining me for this afternoon's Hair and Beauty Apprenticeship Standards Endpoint Assessment webinar. Today, we will be covering more details regarding the endpoint assessment. So today, I'm going to go through the changes to apprenticeships, just a brief overview of the changes between delivering on a current SACE framework to um, a new standard. I'm going to go through a little bit about the maths and English requirements, and then we're really going to spend time looking at new hair professional and preparing apprentices for endpoint assessment. We're going to really drill down and look at the grading criteria of what will be a pass and what will be a distinction. I'm going to give you an update on the level two beauty professional standard and a quick update on the level three hair and beauty standards. And then I will go through some support resources you've got to support you and your learners through this journey. So if you've got any questions to go through, please type up your questions and I'll do my best to answer them all. If I don't answer them all today in today's webinar, I will type up the questions and add them to a frequently asked questions guide for you, which I'll send out later on this afternoon. So, okay, so we're in a situation at the moment where we will at the moment have learners still under current SACE frameworks and obviously learners now that are starting on the new hair professional standard. So I think it's really important for us to understand the differences between assessing on a current SACE framework to how it's going to be assessed as part of the new standard. So for a SACE framework, we know that we have got mandatory qualifications attached to it. So if you're doing a hair or barbering apprenticeship, you'll be doing it currently at the moment as part of SACE framework 6008. And for beauty, we would be doing 3007. We know that if you're doing a level two apprenticeship, you have your maths and English at level one. And we know if you're doing a level three apprenticeship, we have maths and English at level two. We still have the personal learning and thinking skills, but these are completely mapped to the qualification. And if you're still delivering a current SACE framework, we still have employers' rights and responsibilities that need to be completed to achieve that full framework. Currently at the moment, if we had a learner that wasn't able to achieve the set requirements for maths and English, currently today they would still, as part of a SACE framework, they'd go out with a qualification. Um, but we would just get a hit on funding because 20% of our funding is held back on full framework. For a standard, we are really lucky for the new hair professional that we have got a qualification attached to it. We'll probably find moving forward that many of the new standards may not have a qualification that is mandate as part of it. But we have for the hairdressing and barbering level two hair professional. So our qualification is 7002 and we have two routes. We have the hairdressing route and we have the barbering route. It is a super level two apprenticeship. It incorporates level two and level three skills, and it is um, a recommended stay of 24 months, minimum stay of one year and one week. Because it is a level two apprenticeship, we have our maths and English at level one, and we have formative assessment of behaviors. These formative assessment of behaviors are completely mapped to the qualification. We've already embedded this as part of our delivery as part of the 6008 NBQ qualifications of values and behaviours. We also have our endpoint assessment, which we're really going to concentrate and look at today. The endpoint assessment is assessed by an independent examiner who has no incentive to the centre of the training provider or to the apprentice. What our standard is for hairdressing and barbering, which is unlike any other standard, we have got our endpoint assessment built 
as the final module within the qualification. So what that means is, before a learner can go through the gateway, they have to have achieved and passed their functional skills at level one, their maths and English at level one. They have to have completed that qualification up to that point. They have to have obviously achieved their formative assessment of behaviours and they have to have sat and attempted the level two maths and English functional skills test as well. They don't have to have passed it, but they have to have attempted it. Once they've done those, they've achieved the qualification up to that point, achieved their maths and English at level one, attempted level two maths and English, they're ready to go through the gateway to do the end point assessment. But if we had an apprentice which we couldn't get through that maths and English at level one for whatever reason, they are then not even given the opportunity to go through the gateway to do the end point assessment. So that would mean that that apprentice would not go away with an overall qualification. They would go out with a unit credit, but they wouldn't go out with an overall qualification. So I think that is quite important that we must bear that in mind. So we have got our new maths and English grades. This is the first year you would have had learners coming to you where now are getting graded from unclassified up to a, a nine rather than unclassified up to an A star. Slight difficulty here is we're going from a seven point system to a nine point system. So your nine isn't equivalent to your A star, it's your A star star, it's your top 2% of the country. For a level one, a concession for level one functional skills, we now know it's a two. And for a concession for level two functional skills, it is a four. So if we're getting learners come in with a four in maths and English, then obviously they've already achieved half of what they need to do to get through the gateway. They've obviously got their level one and they've got their level two. If we had a learner come into us, an apprentice come into us with a one in either maths or English or both, we've obviously got to try and get them through that maths and English at level one and they have to have passed it and then we've got to give them a good opportunity to try to pass their maths and English at level two as well. So if we are getting lower level learners coming in, it might be a good opportunity to start thinking about traineeships, you know, maybe thinking about um, getting those learners onto a traineeship first to try and improve their employability skills as well as their maths and English before we put them onto a standard. So, two routes. The new hair professional is we've got route one, which is hairdressing, and we've got route two, which is barbering. The qualification, the on program qualification for the level two diploma for hair professionals is we've got the unit 201, which is consultation, which is your consultation unit from level two. So business as usual, what you've been delivering for the last two years as part of 6008. We've got our shampooing unit. Again, the shampooing unit is what we've been delivering for the last two years as part of 6008. So no change to that. So your scheme to work, lesson plans are exactly what you have been delivering for the last two years. For your cutting unit, sorry, someone's just saying the slides are not moving on. Are they moving? Can somebody just tell me, are they moving on now? Can everybody see my slides? Okay, thank you, Sarah. Okay, so the cutting unit is a combination of cutting at level two and cutting at level three. So part A is your basic haircuts. So we have six basic haircuts across the three different hair classifications across the different looks. 
once they've achieved part A, they go on to part B, which shows that you have the two creative restyles. So across the whole of this you this qualified unit, they have to do eight cuts. So the eight cuts are six basic cuts, and then we have two creative restyles. For the styling unit, we have a mis mixture of blow drying from level two, we have setting from level two, and creatively styling and setting from level three. Again, we did, we've separated it into a part A and part B. The part A is your blow drying skills, and your part B is your dressing and setting skills. For your colouring unit, 205, it is a mixture of your level two and your level three colouring unit. When we looked at this unit, it made sense to merge these units together because actually if we think about what our learners do at level two, they actually do quite often do a combination of colours and a combination of techniques. We also have to use choose one optional unit. Your optional unit, you need to choose from either perming, relaxing, or hair extensions. Your perming is from your level two perming from 6008. So we have to do two final perms. One could be on a partial. We've got to remember that when we're talking about hairdressing now, we adopted this for 6008, and we adopted that hairdressing now can be a combination of male or female clients. So that perming unit could be completed on a male. We also have the unit 207, which is your hair relaxing treatments, and then we have your hair extensions, which is a level three unit. going to move on to barbering now. Barbering, we don't have any optional units. It's all mandatory content. For barbering, we have our unit 201, which is our consultation. Unit 202, which is your shampoo, condition, treat the hair and scalp. We have unit 209, which is a combination of your level 2 and your level 3 cutting barbering techniques. For this unit, we haven't done the same as we've done for hairdressing. We've left it as one unit because actually most of our gents' haircuts now are creative. And what we mean by creative is that they incorporate different cutting techniques. Also within this unit, there isn't a requirement any longer to do a creative restyle. It has to just be creative cuts. Then we've got 210, which is our style and finish men's hair. We've got 211, which is your cut facial hair. And then we've got 212, which is your provide shaving services. This is going to be your job ready qualification now for barbering. We will not have a level three barbering standard because there's no need. This is what makes an apprentice completely job ready as a barber. Okay, so business as usual. The on-program aspect for you is business as usual. We've got a cross-unit knowledge test. That is exactly the same rules and regulations as you've been doing for 6008. So that cross-unit knowledge test is done in closed book conditions. Once you've achieved the pass, this is the one test that you have to top up using oral questions to get to 100%. We have mandatory end of unit tests, again, closed book conditions that has to be done. Um, once they've achieved their pass, there is no need to top up to 100%. With the end of mandatory end of unit tests, it doesn't matter if we've merged two units together. 
they both, we will still only have one end of unit test. We've still got inferred knowledge. Inferred knowledge is a naturally occurring evidence. It doesn't have to be ticked, doesn't have to be dated. It is naturally occurring. So we've taken out questions from our um, mandatory tests and cross unit knowledge tests around how to gown and protect. There's no need to have questions on that because we observe an apprentice doing this. We still have our flexibility around timings. These timings, you need to agree with those apprentices before they start, depending on the density and length of the hair. But use Habia's guidelines as a guide. This qualification, because it is a qualification that's attached to a standard, it will still need to have ongoing IQA activity. You will still have EQA activity for this. And because this is a new qualification, you will obviously have to make sure that you up your sample size because you will still won't at the moment have direct claim status for it. So we're not saying 100% sample, but you must make sure that you have met camera and that you have assessed every unit across every assessor, all types of evidence, to ensure when our EQAs come out, they can give you direct claim status. We do have our logbooks. They're there to help record the on-program qualification, so the summative assessments. We have learning assistant. We have our City and Guild smart screen. Just one change that we have had for the new 7002 um, hair professional standard, if you are assessing IQA or EQA on this, you have to show that you've done 50 hours CPD each year. And that is a requirement from our steering group. To clarify CPD, 30 hours has to be now applied, practical, hands-on. So in a commercial environment. It doesn't mean to say that you have to work in a salon, but it does mean that you have to do 30 hours applied practical skills every year to show that you are updating your professional skills as a hairdresser or a barber. You then have 20 other hours. This 20 other hours still needs to be hairdressing or barbering based. So it could be standard standardization activity. It could be updating knowledge or skills through the internet, television. It could be that you're going on a placement or a secondment. That it needs to be related to the hairdressing and barbering industry. Or it could be that you've been to um, a briefing by your awarding organization or your colleagues. Okay, so we're going to move on to the end point assessment now. This will not change year on year. This will be the same for the next three years. It's down to be reviewed in three years' time. So we know that there's going to be a practical assessment, and there has to be two forms of um, assessment in the end point assessment. And at the moment, we had the hair professional approved prior to January this year, so we were able to get it through on oral questions. Moving forward, we will not be able to use oral questions any longer for any new standards. There will have to be a knowledge test or case studies or assignments. Oral questions now are not deemed to be enough um, to test the knowledge behind that practical endpoint assessment. So, for hairdressing, what does hairdressing look like? We have to do one creative restyle and finish using a minimum of three cutting techniques. We need to use two finish looks using a minimum of four techniques. And these techniques will be listed for you in the end point assessment pack that I will send to you at the end of this presentation. You have to do a blow dry, and that blow dry has to create volume and curl. And you have to do a hair up style. 
you need to incorporate one of your looks needs to be up above the shoulder and one of your looks needs to be below the shoulder. You have to use one setting technique. 80% of the hair needs to be dressed up using a minimum of three dressing techniques. You then have two colours to do. One has to be a woven set of highlights or lowlights using a minimum of a T section. The other colour can be a colour that um, changes depth and tone and it needs to be another colouring technique so you can't do two sets of woven highlights. We're looking at around about a minimum of two models. You can do it in two models, but you're going to be quite prescriptive to your apprentices to do it in two models. The way you could do it in two models is that your creative restyle is one of your colours that is in, it's above the shoulder incorporating your round blush glow dry, whereas your other colour could be your below the shoulder using one setting technique um, and dressing the hair up where 80% of the hair is dressed up using a minimum of three dressing techniques. But that is quite restrictive for an apprentice. We're looking at six hours excluding breaks. If your learner or your apprentice decides to do it in three models, that's fine, but they still have to make sure they are completing it within the six hour um, set time. For barbering, we're in the same situation as in hair, where we've got two forms of assessments. We've got the practical endpoint assessment, with, with, where we'll be using some oral questions to check on their performance on that day as well. So for barbering, two barbering looks, using a minimum of nine different techniques across those two looks. You have to do two different neckline shapes, two different outline shapes. One finished look on men's hair, so it needs to incorporate a drying technique. You've got two facial haircuts. One has to be a full beard and moustache, and another one has to be a partial beard and moustache. And then you have to carry out a full shaving service. Again, they're saying a minimum of two models, but my concern with, with two models is if you're using one of your beards, or partial beard moustache for your shave, if you're tidying up around that beard area, you could be sensitising that skin, and then if you go and use your hot towels and your face up, facial massage, it could then that client could have a contraction to that full shaving service. So I think it will probably be better to think about three modules for this one, but again, you've got three hours, you've got to make sure you're completed within those three hours. So let's look at how our apprentices are going to be graded. The grading criteria for the practical observation has been separated out into the following themes. We've got ways of working, technical skills, understanding and customer service. Your apprentice has to pass every one of those. We can't fail ele any element of this endpoint assessment. The technical skills are then broken down into further skills. So you've got your consultation, you've got your shampoo and conditioning, treat hair and scalp, cut hair, style and finish hair, and colour and lightening hair. These technical skills are then given a percentage of contribution towards the overall grade. And we know these apprenticeships, this standard is going to be graded either a pass, distinction or a fail. Our steering group has gone through and weighted each of the skills in the importance of how they feel they are what, how they're going to contribute to the overall grade. So ways of working, it's going to be a pass, a distinction or a fail and it's going to, going to contribute to 5% of the overall grade. Consultation, pass, distinction and fail is going to contribute to 10% of the overall grade. 
Now with shampooing, they still have to pass shampooing, but our steering group has said they, they don't want it to go towards the final grade because they feel the other technical skills are far more important and they want them to reflect in the overall grade rather than shampooing. But if that learner soaked that client during that shampooing process, they would fail overall. So it is still really, really important and they must pass that aspect. Cut the cutting unit. Again, pass distinction and fail. Weighted at 20%. Style finish hair. Pass distinction and fail. It's weighted at 15%. Colouring. Pass distinction and fail. And is weighted at 25%. Your understanding, which will be oral questions that the independent assessor will ask during or after the um, endpoint assessment will be weighted at 20%. And customer service is weighted at 5%. I'm going to turn these into marks now. And for this apprenticeship standard, it's not like the technicals where you're awarding um, a, a band of marks. This is very much, if they meet the pass criteria, they get the pass mark, which is 25 marks for ways of working, 35 marks for distinction. We can't do marks in between, so you can't think they're a high pass or a low pass, or a high distinction or a low distinction. They either meet the pass requirements and they get 25, or they meet the distinction requirements and they get 35. Consultation. For a pass, they get 50 marks. For a distinction, they get 70. For cutting, 100. For a pass, 140 for a distinction. For style and finish, 75 for a pass, 105 for a distinction. Colour and lightning hair, you've got 125 for a pass, 175 for a distinction. Understanding. 100 for a pass, 140 for a distinction, and customer service, 25 for a pass, 35 for a distinction. If a learner fails any one of those aspects, so any ones from ways of working, consultation, cutting, styling, colouring, understanding your customer service, they fail overall. To get a pass, they have to pass every aspect. To get a distinction, they have to be able to get over 634 marks. So they probably have to achieve two areas which are a distinction or more. So we're going to go through our grading criteria now. We're going to go through consultation first. We've also now put in what is a fail because I think it's really important for those apprentices to know actually what is a fail. If I do this, you will fail. So a fail criteria on consultation. If the apprentice does not use all means of identifying that client's wishes, so they don't do a full consultation. If they don't adapt their advice to take into account any factors that are limiting or affecting the service. If they cannot identify or describe any of the problems. If they do not take into account all the hair characteristics. If they don't do the relevant tests on the day. If they do not update your client's record cards for the colouring service. But that shouldn't be news to you because Today, if you were doing a summative assessment and they did any of those during consultation, they would fail. To get a pass is today's competent. So to get a pass, they have to visually and manually inspect the hair and skin and scalp correctly, identifying any key influencing factors. They have to have carried out and confirmed results of all appropriate tests. They need to use a range of consultation and questioning techniques that were adapted to suit each client. They need to use visual aids appropriately to support 
the consultation process. They need to use clients' records to inform of the service plan, if applicable. They need to update their record cards. That is today's business as usual for a competent assessment as part of consultation within your own programme aspect. To get a distinction, those apprentices need to make sure they're keeping that client consistently and fully informed throughout. They're giving justifications for any recommendations and they're tailoring them to the specific need to each of their clients and their longer term plans. They need to make sure they're influencing clients to ensure by negotiating where necessary to, complete, to communicate what is best for that client. They need to respond and react to the clients in a, in a, in a positive, consistent way throughout, having positive body language. So that is a distinction. We're then going to move on to cutting. In the brief, it states they have to use um, three cutting techniques. If they use less than three cutting techniques, they're going to fail. And if they use less than three cutting techniques, it won't be a creative cut. If, they, if the cut is not a creative restyle, they will fail. So it's really important they understand that brief and what is needed and that you are making sure that they are picking those clients to be able to showcase their skills to the best of their ability. If the cut is uneven, they will fail, and so they should. If they don't perform any cross-checking, then they will fail. If the hair isn't finished in the correct way to meet the client's requirements, then they will fail. But this shouldn't be anything different to what you're doing with them now. Difference is, is that you have to remember that they are going to be with an independent assessor here that they're not familiar with. That they could be nervous and we're going to think about how we're going to put our learners at ease throughout the rest of the presentation. So, to get a pass, they have to have sectioned accurately, established guidelines and followed them accurately throughout the cutting service. They have to make sure that they're working methodically through that haircut. But that's what they would do for a pass today. You have to make sure that they've applied the correct cutting angles, that the, you know, they're using correct even tension throughout and they've cross-checked the cut. That is today's competent. To get a distinction, they have to creatively combine and adapted a range of techniques to personalise the haircut in a way that maximises the style potential. This is what we mean by the texturising the ends of the hair to make it lie better. The overall finished look shows precision and attention to detail. So that is your distinction, apprentices. I'm using an example now from shaving, which is from the Barbary hair professional. So if during the endpoint assessment they don't carry out any hair or skin analysis, they will fail. If they do not use the relevant tools and equipment, they will fail. If they did not use all shaving techniques that are detailed in their endpoint assessment, they will fail. They must make sure that they are asking that client about any skin sensitivities and shaving routines. If they have any pull burns or cuts to the skin as, as a result of poor technique, what I mean by poor technique, wrong angle of the blade, or insufficient skin tension, then they will fail. If they don't use 
the hot or cold towels, they will fail. So to get a pass, they have to visually and manually inspect the hair and skin, correctly identify any key influencing factors. They need to check with the client if they have any skin sensitivities. They need to prepare the hair and skin correctly for the shaving service. They need to use hot towels at appropriate time during the service. They need to adapt their service to take into account any limited factors that may influence the shave. They need to use appropriate methods and techniques to perform a full shave. Consistently using good skin tension. tension. Use facial massage techniques appropriately. Need to leave that client's skin from lathering products after shaving. So that is a competent pass today. To get a distinction, they have to use a combination of forehand and backhand techniques with precision that was tailored to the client's needs. And what we mean by that is that they're adapting their forehand and backhand depending on the direction of the hair growth and the facial features. Communications, sorry, customer service. Apprentices will fail if their communication is inappropriate for the client. So they're not thinking about awareness of different cultures, religious backgrounds, age, disability and gender. If they use inappropriate language and their behaviour disregards the clients and uh, make, uses with disregard of the client and others in the salon. If they have no communication with the client during the service, they will fail. If they don't offer advice on maintenance of the hairstyle, they will fail. And if the client's comfort and well-being is actively disregarded, they will fail. To get a pass, they meet and greet all clients appropriately, putting each client at ease. They need to communicate to the client throughout each service using appropriate techniques, body language, language and terminology. They need to ensure the client comfort throughout, respond to their customers' needs, provide correct aftercare advice, promote and recommend suitable products for each client. Each client. To get a distinction, they need to establish and maintain a rapport with each client, regularly confirming that they're meeting their expectations, providing reassurance if necessary. So they're doing a restyle, checking that client, are you happy with what I'm doing? Do you want me to go a little bit shorter? Are you happy with the way that's looking? When they're doing the hair up, are you happy with the way that it's not too full on top? Anticipating clients' needs throughout each service. Aftercare advice was tailored to the client including immediate and long-term advice and was demonstrated at appropriate time to support that client maintaining their hair at home. So we're looking for them not just to be a bit of a parent and do their aftercare at the end, we're also looking at key parts of the service that they can then talk about that client about their aftercare while they're shampooing, keeping that client informed of what shampoo and conditioning products they're using. During the styling process, what are the styling products that you're using that will help that hair, that style stay in longer? So we're giving clear evidence, advice and explanations provided throughout the service in an integrated way with aftercare provided usually naturally occurring opportunities throughout the service to make tailored product and service recommended recommendations to each client. When I finish this webinar, I will send you, we've got an endpoint assessment pack. It is at the moment in draft for hairdressing and barbering. The reason it is in draft at the moment is because 
we've got many people actually carrying out mock endpoint assessments at the moment and we want to make sure that we have got this correct at City and Guilds and it is we've got everything in the correct place. We need it to be run through a few more times. We've already had quite a few people run it through, but there are a few tweaks that I feel may be needed. So if you are doing any mock endpoint assessments, please use, please use this as a guide and please feedback if you feel that anything does need to be tweaked at all around what is a pass, what is a distinction, and what could possibly be a fail. Also within that endpoint assessment pack, when you've got it, it talks about the endpoint assessment environment. And I'm going to talk to you about the options we've got for City and Guilds in a moment. You can either have your apprentices assessed within your own salons, college salons, training provider salons, or they can be assessed in a City and Guilds venue. We think that those apprentices will be much better off being assessed in their own workplace or within the college environment that they're used to or the training provider sounds that you have that they're used to rather than going to an unfamiliar place with an unfamiliar assessor. If you want to become an endpoint assessment site where you're just using, assess, you're using your salons for your apprentices, you do not have to go through a formal process with City and Guilds. You have to just go through a declaration that you state you've got everything in place so when we send out the independent examiner that you have everything in place to make sure that all apprentices have got everything they need to be able to be successful. But I will go through that with you in a moment. So the next thing we really need to think about is barriers to achieving the endpoint assessment for our apprentices. And I do think the endpoint assessment site is one of them. So if you are able to have your, your apprentices assessed within their own salon, within your own salons that they're familiar with, I think your apprentices will be in a much better situation. But to do that, you've got to have a minimum of four apprentices ready to be assessed at one point for us to be able to send out an independent assessor. But also, your apprentices are going to be really, really nervous on that day. So we have to think about how are we going to put our apprentices at ease? How are we going to make this business as usual to them? So we're going to have to think about having many mock endpoint assessments with them along your journey to make sure that they are fully prepared. Our apprentices get very familiar with one assessor. So I think we need to think about introducing different assessors at different points. The people they're not familiar with maybe don't feel quite so comfortable with. So maybe when you bring them in to do those mock assessments, maybe it's somebody that they're not familiar with that is assessing them at the end. Start to build on that, that end point assessment. Your apprentices have been with you for a while now, so maybe we need to start thinking about doing our first mock assessment. It maybe includes a shampoo, colour and a cut. And then maybe in the next three months, shampoo, cut, colour and a hair up. And then we start to move towards their creativity skills, which is the level parts, the level three part of the standard. But we have to make sure we are fully preparing our learners for this endpoint assessment. So, we have to think about, does the apprentice and the employer, employer know what is involved in the EPA? We really have to get buy-in from your employers. Your employers have got to have a voice. Your employers have got to be involved in making sure that that apprentice has the skills to be able to get through that endpoint assessment. Because if they fail, there is an opportunity for a reset, but it's going to be at cost. And that cost is quite expensive. For hairdressing, it'll be £375 
barbering it'll be 325 pound. Does the apprentices know how to achieve a good grade? We should be letting them think about what they need to do to strive to get that distinction. Is the apprentice feeling anxious? And they will be. So how can we support them to make sure that actually they are fully prepared, that they are com comfortable and competent at what they've chosen to do to make sure they can showcase their skills to the best of their ability? Is the apprentice fully prepared? Have you done mock assessments? Have you done self-assessments with them? I would think you'd probably want to put in something like a pre-gateway requirement that they go through the formal endpoint assessment, the whole six-hour trade test as a pre-gateway requirement that you are going to be assessed by somebody they're not familiar with. You also have to make sure that the employer, the apprentice, and you as a training provider has assigned and agreed that you're all in full agreement that apprentice is ready to go through the gateway to do that endpoint assessment. It has to be a partnership between the three of you. So, thinking about top tips for preparing for endpoint assessment. Take time to look at the skills required to be demonstrated as part of your endpoint assessment. This isn't going to change year on year. This is now going to be what the endpoint assessment is going to be for the next three years. So it's public knowledge. You know, it's public. Learners can go on to the to the website and find out exactly what's going to be in it. So you should be sharing it with them, with the employer, fairly early on. When they, the thing that worries me slightly is obviously we are allowing those apprentices to choose those module stroke clients. They're really going to have to play a game on the day, because if unless they do all those customer service skills and those consultation skills, they're going to fail. They have to make sure that they play that game on the day, that they go through and make sure that they're giving that client aftercare advice throughout. They're communicating to that client in a professional way. They're remembering all those softer skills that they need to, to demonstrate and they need to be able to showcase to make sure that they do pass. We want them to practice. Those, that creative restyle, that hair up, those colours that they're going to do, we wanted them to practice, practice, practice to be the best they can possibly be. Think about preparing your apprentice. They are going to be asked questions by the independent assessor because the oral questions make up part of the endpoint assessor assessment. Make sure you have prepared a list of questions to make sure you're asking them around. Those questions will be probably around what is, why have you chosen um, a, that colour? Why have you added base? Why are you using 6% peroxide? Why are you using those cutting techniques? Why are you deciding to use that product? It's going to be the why. So you've got to become that inner child with your, your apprentices and keep on challenging them and say, okay, you're using that massage movement, tell me why. You're doing that, okay, tell me why. Making sure you read your brief. A question has come up is, what is the definition of a creative restyle? A restyle is, a re the definition of a restyle, it changes shape, all right, and it, it, to be creative, it has to include a range of different cutting techniques. So a creative restyle wouldn't be if somebody had one length hair and you cut it, you cut six inches, eight inches off for it to be a shoulder length bob. That shoulder length bob is not a creative restyle. We know what a creative restyle is. It's the aspect of your level three. So we need to think that making sure that when they are choosing that creative restyle, it has to be incorporating different cutting techniques. 
So if they just use club cutting and they just use freehand, that is not a creative restyle. Another question that's just come up as well, which I'll answer now, is is the assessor allowed to be there during the endpoint assessment? There is nothing to say the assessor can't be there, but you will be putting your apprentice under undue pressure if you are there breathing down their neck. I think it'll probably be better that you leave that apprentice with that endpoint assessor that you don't, you're not in the background, because that will just make an apprentice really, really nervous. You can have a technician in there with you, you can have a junior in there, which can be um, maybe meet and greeting clients, it can be uh, make clients teas and coffees, it could be tidying up and things like that, but you can't have a junior that's doing it shampooing off any of the colours or anything like that because all that is all part of the end point assessment. You must make sure you read your brief. You must make sure that you highlight the key areas that are going to be assessed on the day. You must make sure you check that learners understand, that apprentice's understanding that they are completely happy with why they're using a texturising technique what angle they're doing that graduation at, why have they added um, some more tone into a colour. They have to be confident at everything that they're going to be doing on that day, so you need to be able to prepare them. Preparing for that practical test. Preparing for that practical test, you need to make sure that before you arrive, you will have to send the end point assessor um, a plan of a, a, your, your working day, of what clients are coming in at what time, so that they are where you don't want all of your three clients turning up at the same time, sitting in reception. You want them to come in at set times. So you have to think about making sure that they are completely prepared for it. They have practiced, 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 and they're not going to try anything new on the day. They're going to be prepared and give their star performance. They need to understand what the practical test consists of, how long it's going to take. We're giving them six hours. They need to pick those clients to be able to achieve it in six hours. A bit like the L'Oreal Colour Trophy or the weather exposure. You can't then once that time's up, that we're not saying they have to put their cones down, but obviously we don't want them to go over six hours. They've been given a the time, they should be able to do it comfortably within that time. Somebody's just asked, can, can men and women be used? Yes, you can. As long as that creative restyle is incorporating three different techniques and it's changing shape you can use male or female clients. That's not a problem for the end point assessment because hairdressing is hairdressing. It can be used in a combination of male or female hairdressers. Got another question. Will the independent assessor be checking the restyle or will it be visual checks? That I'm not 100% sure of yet. Usually at level three, we don't check that cut, but if that independent assessor maybe feels that that cut is uneven, they may. At the moment, we have just recently employed our lead independent assessor. We will now, after Christmas, start to look through the hundreds of CVs that we've had to look about um, starting to train up our independent assessors. Now, for City and Guilds, we've already been through this quite a few times in lots of other areas. We have learned some lessons along the way. And one of the lessons we've learned along the way is no point training up our independent assessors too early. Because unless you use it, you lose it. So, after today, I'm going to be sending you out a survey as well, because one of the things I need to be aware of now is when are we thinking of our first endpoint assessment is going to be. 
Now, I plotted it out already in my mind. I think we might have a few in August next year, a few more in September, and it will start to build. But I can't really see that many will be ready before July or August next year. Because don't forget, it's typically 24 months, minimum stay, one year and one week. And don't forget, this standard includes level three skills. The majority of our learners are going to need much longer than a year to do it. Unless you've got an apprentice coming with prior learning or is slightly older, and we have to think about that. So my intention is that we will start to train up our independent assessors in around about March time, ready for the first EPAs, which will be possibly a few in July, a few more in August, a few more in September, and then it will start to rack up. And these are the sort of questions around will we check the restyle, these are the sort of things that we will be discussing with our independent assessors. If I was an independent assessor and I felt a cut could have been uneven and it wasn't, maybe that, that apprentice hadn't cross-checked through, I didn't see any cross-checking through, I may want to cross-check it and check that cut through. So, thinking about your mock tests, thinking about preparing for practical tests, my biggest worry is those models that we're choosing have got to play a game on the day as well. Our apprentice has to play a game on the day. They have to pretend that they've never met that client before. So they go through that formal way of doing their consultation, their aftercare, check-in, you know, all those things that we would do every day in a salon with a new client. But we've also got to get those model stroke clients to pretend that they need to play a game on the day as well, but they've got to act like a client that they've never met that stylist before. Now, we'd be wanting to say to them, can you not use your mobile phone you know, while they're working, and things like that. Can you act as if, you know, we want that apprentice to be in the best possible position to be able to strive for those distinction marks. To be able to do that, they've got to be able to, especially in ways of working, customer service and consultation, They've got to play a game. They've got to be able to show they have got those interpersonal skills. We have to make sure those models are going to be reliable on the day. They need to make sure they've got all their products. Because although they may be being assessed within your own salons, within your colleagues, your training provider, we know many of our salons use lots of different products. You could have Weller in your college or your training provider but that learner is more happier to use a loyal product because that's what they use in their salons. If that is the case, then they will have to bring all their products with them and they have to think about every eventuality. What happens if that woven set of highlights needs to be toned? They have to make sure they've got a toner in their backpack just in case because they can't use something from weather because that client would have been skin tested. Thinking about their tools and equipment, making sure all their tools and equipment are in good working order, making sure that their cones haven't got any teeth missing, making sure their equipment has been pack tested if it's over a year old. These sort of things you need to be aware of. Okay. Moving on, are you ready? Remember your five P's. Planning and preparation prevents poor performance. Practice makes perfect. So we want them to practice, 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 and do even more practice to be the best they can possibly be. Mock tests. We need to make sure that we this becomes business as usual to them, that they're doing mock tests with people they're unfamiliar with, so that they are completely prepared. The better prepared they are, the less they're going to panic on the day. Somebody just asked a question around, do the clients have to have a variety of hair types? No, we're not saying that in the in, in independent assessment. 
you don't have to worry about that. But obviously, if they are using somebody with a type 3 or type 4 hair, then obviously they have to adapt their service to meet the needs of that hair type. Evaluation. One of the things our learners don't do very well at is evaluation. They have to think about after, they have to start thinking about it now after every assessment, write down what went well, what could have done better, and what maybe you might do differently the next time. Our learners find it and our apprentices find it very, very difficult to evaluate. One of the things that I would actually give you as a tip is that actually give your apprentices a critical friend from day one, a critical buddy. Every apprentice tends to have an iPhone. They could, what they could then do is record each other doing that consultation, doing that aftercare. Two reasons for that. Firstly, it will make them to remember to do that consultation, remember to do that aftercare. But also, by watching it back, they could look at, you know, were they, what's their body language like? Were, she, were they smiling at the client? Were they listening to what the client was asking? Were they using open and closed questions? It's much easier to be able to evaluate something you can watch rather than just say, well, how did that go? Think about your timings. You've got to make sure you've got six hours for hairdressing to do it, three hours for barbering. They have to be able to do it. They have to be able to pick those clients to be able to achieve it in that set time. If they're doing three clients for hairdressing and barbering, don't forget that third client they've still got to finish. They can't just send that client out with wet hair. So you must make sure that you're adding that into your timings. So you have to think about doing the task in the most logical order. Hopefully if they're doing a restyle, they'll restyle it before they colour it if they're recolouring that restyle model. Were they fully prepared before starting? Have they got all their tools and equipment ready, set up, ready for those clients? Do you have all your equipment and products ready? Working on modules. If, you're, if we are required to work on models throughout the clients, are you going to give, are, are those models going to give you the best opportunity to showcase your skills to the best of ability? So we want to choose those models very, very carefully. We want to choose those, you know, that hair type that you can showcase your skills on, not somebody that's got really fine, baby fine hair that you're not going to be able to showcase your skills on for cutting. Making sure that client that's having that set and that hair up, they've got that, you've practiced that hair up so many times you know it inside out and upside down. Although it says it has to have one setting technique, it doesn't say it has to be a wet set. Some people have already tried to do, um, done the mock assessment on this, and actually if you're doing a wet set, it does cut down on your time elsewhere as well, unless you're doing something in between while that client is drying. So think about, don't try something new on the day. I know I keep on saying that, but it's really important that they've all, what they choose on the day, they've already perfected. Brief those models. You need to brief those models to tell those models how important it is that they turn up on time and what is expected of them. That this is that apprentice's opportunity to shine. That they have to act in a professional way as well. Okay. EPA price. You've got two options. If you want your apprentices to be assessed in a city guilds venue, which is not your salons, then it will cost £375 per apprentice at an external venue. If you want your apprentice to be assessed within your own realistic work environments or salons, 
we have worked out the cost on a minimum of four apprentices at one point. So that will make 1,500, which is 375 pound per apprentice. If you can have five being assessed on the same day, it brings the price down to £320 per apprentice, which is £1,600. If you can have six, it's £283, which is £1,700. Seven, it brings the price down to £257. And if you've got eight apprentices, then it brings the price down to 238 If you only have three apprentices or two apprentices, you can still have them assessed within your own realistic working environments, but the minimum cost will be £1,500 for City and Guilds. For barbering, because it's only a three-hour endpoint assessment, price is £325 per barber. If it's a City and Guilds venue, an external venue, £325 per apprentice. If you're using your own venue, minimum again is on four apprentices being assessed at one point, which is £1,300. If you've got five ready, it brings the price down to £280. You have six, it brings the price down to 250, seven, 229, eight, 213. So as part of the survey that I'm going to be sending you after this webinar, firstly I need to know when you think your apprentices are going to be ready for that end point assessment, so I can make sure we've got all of our independent assessors trained up, ready, and enough of them ready for you. But also, we need to know if you would prefer them to be assessed within your own venue or if you want City and Guilds to provide the venue. At the moment, we haven't gone down the route at the moment of engaging with providers or colleges on hiring out their facilities. And I won't do that until I know what the demand is and what areas. So as soon as I send you through that survey, it would be really helpful if you could get back to me firstly on when you think your apprentices are going to be ready, and then secondly, if you are thinking of having them assessed in a city and guilds venue, what part of the country you are, so we can make sure that we then start to think about going out and finding those colleges, training providers where we can hire their facilities off of them to have different apprentices being assessed from different training providers and colleges in one venue. I'm just going to check questions before I go on. Okay, so no, the maximum is set by our steering group which is Somebody's asked what is the maximum apprentice can be assessed at one point. The maximum has been set by our steering group, which is eight. So you can have up to eight apprentices being assessed at one point. And if so, obviously it brings the price down. Somebody has also just said today we've done a mock EPA. Is it possible to have the observation guide? Yeah, I'm going to send them out at the end of this session. I will send you the observation guides. And if anybody is carrying out mock assessments using these observation guides, please let me know how it goes. Please let me know if you've got any feedback about the endpoint assessment pack. Um, the reason it's got in draft at the moment is that I want to do these launch events first with all my centres listen to your feedback, I want to work with our centres to make sure we've got it right. Okay, when you decide your apprentice is ready to go through the gateway, so they've completed that qualification up to that point, they have um, achieved their maths and English at level one and they've attempted maths and English at level two, 
and you feel that that apprentice is fully ready to go forward and do the endpoint assessment. It is a 30 day, we, we need 30 days to be able to book it. So if you decided in September, you want your assess learners, to, apprentices to be assessed in October, you need to give us around about 30 days notice. We may be able to do it quicker, but we're saying around about 30 days notice. When you register your apprentice for the endpoint assessment, they will get a diagnostic tool which is being designed called Filtered for our apprentices. This will um, support your apprentice with how they can showcase their knowledge and skills and behaviours. This is free of charge when they register for endpoint assessment. It will have top tips on how to think about doing that professional discussion, oral questions. It will have online learning content to help that apprentice prepare. It will be around those softer skills and it will be relevant to the method of assessment as part of the hair professional. Okay. I'm going to move on now, just a quick update on what's happened with beauty. At the moment with beauty, we are no further forward at the moment. There's a meeting that's been held tomorrow, so hopefully we may have slightly more information for you um, by the end of the week. But currently, the standard has been approved, but because the assessment hasn't been approved, the standard is not yet ready to use. If you want to go on to this link, it, you can go in and have a look at the standard. But because the assessment plan hasn't been approved and the funding ban hasn't been approved yet, we cannot yet start to develop this apprenticeship standard. So the, the beauty professional plan is obviously at the moment being worked on. We are still waiting for the IFA to allocate a funding band, but they're waiting for more information from the steering group before they can do that. We're still looking at three distinctly different occupational pathways for professional beauty role. Beauty and makeup consultant, which is going to be aimed at your concession stores, so your MAC, your benefit, you know, those apprentices that maybe want to work in John Lewis or House Fraser on the concession stores. We've then got our beauty therapist role and our now technician role. Each standard will have professionalisms and values, very similar to hairdressing, safe working practices and core behaviours. For the beauty consultancy, this is what it's looking like at the moment. So we've got instructor use and application of skincare products and makeup. Advise and demonstrate eyelash and eyebrow products. Advise and demonstrate facial products to customers. Now products to customers. Advise and demonstrate promotional activities. Advise and demonstrate beauty recommendations to customers and perfumery. Going on to the beauty level two professional, we've got waxing, hand and nail treatments, which is your manicure, foot treatments, which is your pedicure, facial, eyelash and eyebrow treatments, makeup application, and provide massage treatments. For the nail services, we've got manicure, we've got pedicure, advise customer nail products and services, gel polish services for nails, basic nail art, and nail enhancements. Because beauty wasn't approved like hair, the hair professional before January, we can't have oral questions any longer. So it has to be two forms of assessment, which is your knowledge test and the observation. You have to be able to get a distinction in both to be able to get a distinction overall. They wouldn't be able to just pass knowledge 
if they just pass the knowledge, then they wouldn't be able to get a distinction overall. They have to have distinction in both areas. For the advanced beauty professional standard, it is still in development at the moment, but I think the steering groups are having to concentrate on getting the level two right at the moment. But the standard is still in the first draft and in first consultation. Update on the senior hair professional standards. Um, I feel much more confident about the new hair professional standards now. Um, we've actually had another meeting today about it, and I think this will be going out into consultation fairly soon. What we're looking for now is we've got four units. We've got use fashion forward trends in hair, creative and precision techniques to create a collection of hair looks on male and females. So this unit, the apprentices would have to design a hair collection look. Within that hair collection look, they will have to do a precision cut they would have to do a creative colour and a creative styling technique. So across the three looks they have to do, they have to cover that range. They have to do smoothing and strengthening services, which isn't your relaxing unit, it's your chemical, it's your keratin blow dry. They have to do creative colour conversion. So that is your creative colour correction unit and your hair and scalp specialist unit. As I say, we've been working on the assessment plan today. Hopefully, it may go out for consultation before Christmas. If not, it'll be after Christmas. But as soon as I get that, I will send it out for you so that you can all have your say on the new senior hair professional. Qualification, support and resources. We have got our learning logbooks. We have got learning assistant. Our textbook isn't quite ready yet. It will be there for after Christmas. We always said we couldn't turn our textbook around quick enough for the beginning of this new standard. And we've got our smart screen resources. We've got our level two and level three barbering enhanced smart screen. We developed this because we've now, um, although we have still got Sitting Guilds MHD Academy, we are um, putting all the stuff we used to have on MHD onto Smart Screen. And because we owned the rights at Sitting Guilds of all the barbering e learning, we've been able to just to pick it up and put it onto Smart Screen. Because this is an enhanced smart screen package, it is £850. So for £850, it gives you unlimited access to all your learners and all your tutors. So for barbering, it is fully supported. So we've got all your schemes of work, all your lesson plans, handouts, activities, and we've got video e-learning. For hairdressing, because we didn't own the rights to all the video e-content within Sitting Guilds MHD Academy, we are refilming after Christmas. So at the moment, we have a basic smart screen package for level two and level three, which is £350, which incorporates all your schemes work, lesson plans, individual learning plans, consultation, worksheets. It's got some links to some GISC video content, but we will have everything ready for you for May or June next year. This one is £350 and it's unlimited access for all your tutors and all your learners. Okay, going to move on. For beauty, we have, we didn't have City Guilds MHD for beauty anyway, so we've got our level two and level three beauty therapy enhanced smart screen. So again, because it's enhanced, it's £850 at level two and £850 at level three, but it includes again all your lesson plans, schemes of work, all your video e learning um, and instructional videos. So 
coming to the end of our webinar now. Um, I've not been able to get through all the questions, but what I will do is I will type up the questions and I will give you the responses um, when I email you back with all the resources for today. This webinar has been recorded as well. So I will, as soon as the webinar has been downloaded and recorded, I will send you the recording of the webinar as well. But what I will do immediately today, now that we've finished, is that I will send you my presentation, which will be in PDF, it won't be in PowerPoint, because we're finding these PowerPoints are quite large and they get um, knocked back by quite a few emails, so we've done it in PDF. And I will send you the two endpoint assessment packs for hairdressing and for barbering. As I say, we really want to listen to what our centres are saying. We really want for you to start to work through these to make sure that we have got them right. So um, any feedback will be greatly appreciated. As soon as I get any more information about beauty therapy standards or the level three in hairdressing, I will send you all out the consultation. But I'd like to thank you very much for joining me this afternoon and I'd like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Any questions, please email me. Um, I'm always at the end of an email or at the end of the phone. All right, thank you very much. Bye. I answered a few of them, but I, can I, I couldn't really get them up, I didn't know how to, what, what file, file, end, end.